Good morning, class. Uh, today is October the 14th. So this is the video for October 15th lecture. And um, today's lecture is uh, the second lecture on oxidation. And so just to reiterate um, our picture of a silicon wafer on the side here. Okay, we have uh, oxygen gas flowing, and we've oxidized to a depth uh, capital Z. So this is SiO2, and then silicon. And the concentration of oxygen um, varies linearly through the oxidized layer with a value equal to Cs at the surface and C sub Z at the interface between silicon and silicon dioxide. And um, last time we showed that using the principle that the reaction rate is equal to the flux of oxygen, um, which is equal to then D times Cs minus Cz over capital Z, just taking the slope. Um, and it's also equal to the rate constant of the reaction times C sub Z. So this is, you know, this is the most important thing I'm trying to convey here is that the, re the reaction rate um, is equal to two things. It's equal to the flux of oxygen which is given by the slope uh, of C times D. It's also equal to the value of, our, uh, of uh, the concentration of oxygen at the interface, C sub Z, times the rate constant. So because it's equal to those two things, we use that to derive um, that C sub Z is equal to the solving that equation um, D times Cs minus Cz over, um, whoops, sorry, Cz, solving for something else, D times Cs over Kz plus D. Okay, and um, also, uh, we want to dc dt, and we determined last time that that's equal to the, the molar volume. I can't draw it. There we go. That's sort of like the molar volume um, times the reaction rate. And so we put those two things together, and we uh, came up with a differential equation that we solved. And uh, we solved for Z is equal to minus Z naught plus the square root plus Z naught times the square root of 1 plus T over capital T, where Z naught is defined as um, D over K, and T is defined as D over uh, 2u, whatever that is, the molar volume, k squared, c sub s. And so um, there it is. I mean, um, once, you, once you realize the reaction rate is equal to those two things, um, the reaction rate, remember, um, is defined in the notes. That's the moles of SiO2 um, produced per unit time, per unit area. And so that's equal to the flux of oxygen because in the reaction, the moles of SiO2 is equal to the moles of oxygen. And, and so dz dt, uh, this is the volume per mole time, you know, times the moles per unit area per unit time. And so that gives you distance over time. And then you just you just solve. So um, it's it's really pretty simple. It's just a little bit convoluted. And um, now we're going to interject the homework problems. 
All right, I'm going to walk around so I don't lose my focus. Now, um, homework five, problems one and two. I mean, um, the point here and the reason why uh, I asked them uh, for you to turn them in uh, by today is, is twofold. One, um, they're very easy <laughs> um, and they're very simple. It just takes a few minutes and oxidation is, is not a hard to understand as you can see. It's just putting the pieces of the puzzle together and there's only a couple of pieces really and it's very simple. And, and yet I know it gives students problems, so I ask you to do this because one, it folds into today's lecture, and two, it will reinforce, it reinforces your understanding instead of me just telling you uh, the answer. So um, problem one was, was simply to take the binomial expansion. Okay, z is equal to uh, minus z naught plus the square root plus z naught times the square root of one plus t over t. And, you know, I mean, we went through in the, in the class when we talked about charge neutrality and solving for that, um, 1 plus x to the n is approximately equal to 1 plus nx uh, for x much less than 1, right, which is a standard mathematical principle that everyone in this class should understand. So this is approximately equal to negative z naught plus z naught times 1 plus t over 2t, because n here is 1 half. So all, all you had to do was, was take that approximation. If you take that approximation, that cancels that, and you're left with um, z naught over 2 capital T, t. And so what happens is that z versus time starts out linear. Uh, and you were supposed to plug in some values and uh, uh, you were supposed to just plug in for, for t equal t. So if you plug in for capital T, right, that of course, can plug in for capital T, that's one half. Whereas if you take the, the um, so that's the linear approximation, if you take the full curve, right, from here, uh, plugging into, that's the square root of two, um, and you can, you can do it in your head. Um, so if, if t is equal to capital T, that's one plus one, which is two, the square root of two is 1.414, so it's 1.414 z naught time. So it's 1. Point, so it's 0.414. And so that tells you how much you're off if you use the linear approximation at t equal to capital T. Um, and and so you know basically the, the uh, this is the linear approximation and the real function does something like that, uh, where it goes as a square root thing. So that was problem one. That was all I wanted you to do. And so uh, the point of the problem was to make sure you understand that it is approximately linear up to a certain point and what the error of that approximation would be by the time equals to t. Now, um, someone asked me in the chat class last time whether z naught and t have some sort of special meaning. And the answer is no. They are simply collecting terms to allow you to do the problem more simply. Um, basically, it's, it's combining D and K into one term. Uh, and, and here again, uh, essentially combining D and K into one term, and in this case, molar volume as well. And, um, you know, if you think about it, um, the reaction rate goes up with K and D. And so you would think that um, uh, you would think that, that the depth um, uh, would be proportional to both of them somehow. Uh, the point of d over k, 
both of them going up makes the reaction rate going up. So they kind of, in this equation, cancel each other out. The point is that capital T, this, this characteristic time, goes as d over k squared. And so basically, as k goes up, that characteristic time goes down. And the only meaning uh, between z naught and, uh, of z naught and t can kind of be derived here, which is that, okay, in the linear approximation, um, at a time equal to t, the oxidation depth is equal to z naught over 2, roughly. Uh, so, um, you know, no, there's no special meaning. It's just a mathematical tool for collecting terms. So there's fewer things that you have to know in order to solve the problem. Now, um, I'm going to erase this then. So that was problem one. So, I mean, you know, uh, problem one was, 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 oh, that's, I mean, it really, it should have just taken you a few minutes to do it. So I, I, I didn't feel that it was unfair to ask you to do this by today. Now, uh, for problem two, you were asked to, to draw these curves. And, and in fact, well, you know, all the information is given to you. Um, if, you uh, if you take, um, you know, we didn't, uh, it's in the notes, we didn't really go over it last time. But um, if you take this, this solution for C sub Z, and you plug in for Z, uh, you get the CZ, the concentration at the depth, is equal to dcs over, uh, I'll write it this way, um, kz plus d all right and so um, you know we've solved for z and so basically um, uh, you can write this out as dcs uh, over um, D plus um, K Z naught G minus K Z naught um, plus Z naught times the square root of one plus T over T. And if you plug in terms, uh, Okay, now look at kz naught. Kz naught is d, and so those cancel out. And so basically, uh, that turns into um, dcs over the square root. If you plug in the z naught, and there's a reason why I'm doing it this way, uh, d squared um, plus 2k squared our molar volume d c s t and and so uh, plugging all that in you collect you divide by d and if you divide by d that gives you a one over d there and you'll recognize that as our key term one plus over t to the minus one half. So, um, you know, that's in the notes. Um, it really wasn't part of the homework problem to derive that. And, and in fact, I mean, for <laughs> I, I didn't realize until after I handed out the problem uh, that um, I had given you the answer <laughs> um, that for t over t, capital T, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let me see. Let me do this down here because I want to put my, my plot up there. So um, T over T, one, two, three, four, five. And you can see that. Okay, Z over Z naught. And C over CS, CZ over CS. Um, you just plug in. 
Okay, and, and in fact, it's, oops, not zero. It's zero, zero. So this is 0.414, we just noted that. This is 0 0.732, 1, 1.236, 1.44, I mean, this, this is in the note. Um, and C over CS, uh, at, uh, this is 0 0.707. 0 0.577, 0 0.5, 0 0.447, and 0 0.408. Now I debated, okay, so um, <laughs> it simply regurgitated what was in the notes. That was part of the homework problem, was to determine those values. Now, what I wanted you to do though was make the plot so that I, I knew that you understood what was going on here. So this is now versus little z, okay, the actual depth, um, normalized to z naught. And I wanted the concentration as a function of z relative to cs. And, and so, of course, um, Of course, they all, all the curves start at one, right? Because um, the concentration is that at the surface. And um, if you take T over T equal to one, so at that time, at time equal to capital T, uh, Z, um, uh, the depth uh, relative to Z naught is 0.414. Okay, and the concentration is um, at that depth is 0 0.707. So we have a curve like this. Right, where I'm exaggerating a little bit, um, but you'll see why in a second. Um, if you actually look at it uh, uh, on the scale, it's this is a little bit exaggerated. Uh, and let me try and redraw that as a straight line. So the concentration varies linearly down to 0 0.707 of CS at, um, at a depth of 0.414 Z naught. Okay, so that's all I wanted you to do. And if you continue, so this is uh, this is key, t, uh, time equal to t. And then if you, and I'm not drawing these to scale. Let me make it a little bit longer. They're all straight lines. Okay. So that's at a different time. And Now you can see, kind of, that I, I, I didn't have to think too hard about how to draw them. And the reason why is because I know this. Okay, so I can kind of do this just off the top of my head. Okay, I know that the reaction rate is equal to two things. The reaction rate is proportional to the, to the slope. And so the reaction rate at the interface, as so this is 2t, this is 3t, 4t, and 5t. So at those times, the concentration of oxygen in the sample has these profiles, and it stops at, at these points, which are the oxidation depths. So these are C sub z, all right? And you see that I've carefully drawn C sub Z going down. All right, and the reason why is because 
the reaction rate is equal to Kc sub z, and it's also equal to uh, the absolute value of dc dz. And so as time goes on, okay, this goes down um, as T goes up, all right? And so also, this must go down as time goes up. Because the reaction rate at the interface as time goes on is getting slower because the slope is getting uh, less. And so C sub Z must also be getting smaller. And so that's what I wanted you to recognize. That's why I wanted you to plot it so that you would see this you would see the principle we started with, which is that the reaction rate at the interface is equal to those two things. And so the, prof the slopes um, in the endpoints must both conform to that. So that was the point of the problem. Um, you know, because I could have just put up these curves and you, know, you would have said, oh, okay, that's nice, pretty and everything. Uh, and I even did it with colors in my uh, plot. Okay, but doing it yourself, I hope you understood um, and recognized what you were drawing, that C sub Z was going down at the same time that the slope was going down. All right, now, um, you know, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, I, I wanted to spend the whole entire week on, on oxidation so that, you know, uh, you would get it better. Uh, there's the third homework problem that's due Monday like usual. And um, again, you're going to have to use the principle, uh, this principle, in order to, uh, to figure out that problem. And uh, we'll go over that Monday. So there's really not that much more to go over. I realized that the, that the video and the lecture is a little bit short this week, but the point was to spend the entire week in oxidation to make sure we understood it well. In the chat class tomorrow, we'll go over um, the, the, the homework problems and, and understand uh, uh, things. Um, the only thing else I could go over, which I, I'll, you know, I, I would prefer that you do, which is to show the units of these things are correct. Now, you, you, I want you to derive the units for D and, and units for K using how they appear in the reaction rate and show that D over K has units of distance and that these terms uh, have units of, uh, when both put together, a unit of time. So please do that offline. Um, again, I could do it for you, uh, but you know, part of the, the methodology here, this is a, a little bit of a complicated subject. If you think about it, not really, because once you get this, the rest is just sort of walking through a little bit of math. And it's not very difficult math uh, at that. Um, so it's, it's not really, you know, hard to do. And, um, um, you know, I always compare teaching to, to um, uh, if, if I'm sitting there in a car with you while we're driving somewhere, okay, everyone, everyone has had that experience, okay? Um, you, know, you and a friend are going someplace, and the friend knows how to get there, okay? And, and so, um, you know, if, if, if you get in the car and, and you're driving and you don't know where you're going, but your friend does, and your friend says, okay, go straight here, turn right here, turn left here, okay, etc. Um, and you do that, okay, you don't know how to get there <laughs> because you, the friend has just told you how to get there. But if you ahead of time go, f go through with your friend and say, how do I get there? And you look at the map and you figure it out. And so you sit there and you drive and your friend is there as a backup and, and, and you're like, okay, this way, this way, this way, you learn how to get there. So it's very important, and that was part of the reason for, for making problems one and two do now, is, is you need to do this. You need to figure this out. You need to show that these units are correct so that you prove to yourself that you understand it. 
And then homework uh, problem three will reinforce that. Okay, so we'll talk more uh, during chat tomorrow.